won't be staying on here very long because my health is still not uh, up to par with my breathing and everything. But I just wanted to get on here. First of all, thank God for sparing my life. And uh, second thing is I want to thank everybody that prayed for me um, while I was in the hospital. I don't, there were times that I felt alone and uh, well, I was alone, but uh, then there were times that either somebody was praying for me on the phone or I was crying out myself and uh, I felt the presence of God enter into that place and I didn't feel, feel alone. But um, I'm on here for just a couple of reasons and not to, I just want to thank God for, for sparing my life. And later I'll share some testimonies of things that God did while I was in the hospital. Um, I want to thank my wife for uh, being a nurse at home. I want to thank all the medical staff that is putting their life on the line. But uh, uh, the reason why I'm making this video is, number one, I wouldn't want anybody to ever go through what I had to go through. And I know there's others that are much, they're going through so much more than I did. Um, uh, <coughs> but uh, um, I literally didn't sleep for three days because I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. Um, but if, it, if my condition hadn't been caught early, uh, my wife was diligently uh, checking my oxygen levels at the last couple days before I went to the hospital. So when she's seen it dip, um, they put me in the hospital. But if it had gone, I did get, I don't know what kind of pneumonia, double pneumonia or whatever, that had ended up getting into my lungs from the COVID. My blood got infected. Um, but if they had not caught it uh, early, I, I would be on a ventilator or worse. Um, and then even with that, being said, there's uh, the, my, my neighboring, the neighboring patient that was next to me, he was 45 years old and he ended up, uh, when I left, they said he wasn't gonna make it, but he turned the different direction. But I truly, truly believe that with uh, the prayers that were made, I know, I, I came to grips with it that I wasn't going to make it. Felt like I had lived a good life, been blessed, but God spared me. There's nobody can convince me any different. You'd have to have been in my shoes. But I, I, I would say that there's a couple things the doctors and nurses actually had. They pretty practically begged me when they heard that I was a preacher to uh, get the word out there. Please, please, please. Tell the, tell the people that it's real. And uh, see, the thing that you don't, we don't really comprehend, you may, you may just get small symptoms, but I, I have a compromised immune system due to travels and unhealthy lifestyle of eating, just being frank. Um, and I've always had a weak immune system. So I'm susceptible to pneumonia and uh, different things. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. I do feel to, to say this really quick. That 
you may be healthy and not even know you have the symptoms, but if you pass it to somebody, if you pass this to somebody, and I'm not, I'm not here to take a platform on church gatherings and not, I believe that, I believe in divine healing. But even in prayer, God told me, because I heard some preaching that was being done. And some will die. Some with the Holy Ghost will die. We're not, it's a point that everybody is going to die. Our life is as a vapor. It's here today. And whenever you have sickness, you realize that it could be gone tomorrow. And uh, you can't, uh, it's something that you can't play with. Uh, and I wouldn't want anybody, nobody, to have to go through uh, what, where they're feeling like they're fighting for their life by themselves, to be in the hospital. The nurses, they can only come in. You're, you're by yourself. You're, there's nothing they can do um, to help you. You're going without water at times because they're so busy dealing with patients that are on lifeline or, or fighting for their life. Um, so they, they, they have to prioritize. But the, the, the main thing that I need, I felt I needed to say was, don't put, don't put your, your loved ones in, don't put your neighbors, don't put anybody in, in, in their, their life in jeopardy because it, it, it's real. Um, and it, it, it's, this is, this, this is something that everybody, Christians, non-Christians, it doesn't matter. We're all facing, and we've got to be uh, wise about making sure that we protect our loved ones. If you know, I, I feared, I do. If I got, if I got close to it because of my health, that it was going to hit me harder than it hit my, my wife's been hit hard, but I knew it would probably hit me harder due to my system, and it did. So anybody that has compromised systems. Don't go near them, please. It, it deteriorates just so rapidly, and they, there's no coming back. I, 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 the doctor literally looked at me and told me, "You're one of the lucky ones." I don't. Uh, I, I know it wasn't luck. I think it was. I believe with everything in me, it was prayer. He told me the guy that sat next to me, same condition. I went one direction of getting better, and he is not going to make it. It's, literally what the doctor said. So we know God's a healer, but if we don't get sick, we don't need healing. He's, it's not his intention to just go around healing Christians. He left John the Baptist in, in prison. There's, there's instances when even in the scriptures that some had to be left behind because they couldn't even go to the revival in the Bible because they were sick. And they were doing, it wasn't healing crusades. It was, it was about Jesus Christ. It was about, their, it was about their eternal salvation, not about life here. Paul said, if I had hope in this life only, I would be of all men most miserable. Brother Khan, I don't, I don't, I don't know if, I, I think it's too, uh, I think I am, but I, I, I think that they said, it's a little too early to know if I'm, I, I should be immune to it now. Um, I, I pray to God I don't ever have to go through it again. I was in that, I'm gonna tell you, I love, I love people. I'm trying not to get choked up, but I didn't think I was ever gonna see my wife again. My, my kids, my grandbabies. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm happy. I really am, I promise. But I only made this video right now. I don't feel like it. I'm probably emotionally just a wreck to even be able to be out of the hospital because you're alone. They can't, nobody can come in. My wife couldn't be there. No family members could be there. Thank God for social media today. 
It was a godsend during this time. I couldn't talk, but I uh, just to see faces and, of my family. And, It was, uh, it was uh, a godsend. But uh, I, I want to share some stuff. I did feel angelic presence come into the place. Uh, Brother Doug Kleindens called me. I'll share this and then I'm done. But Brother Doug Kleindens, the evangelist, called me. And we prayed. Holy Ghost came in that room. And I felt angelic presence come in there when we were praying. And I didn't necessarily know that God was saying he's gonna heal me, but if there was, that was a turning point in this where it was, it wasn't, it was going down. It was going south. And, but I, I, I was definitely not alone in that room after that prayer. I felt, I didn't see angels, but I definitely felt angelic or God presence in that place. And uh, God was confirming. I told him, he literally said, I'm not alone right now. I said, God's here. And uh, I could share a few other stories, but I'll share this one other thing. While I was in there, there was a uh, my, the guy, the gentleman that was, Next to me was dying. Um, the doctors asked me if they could take my blood and put it in his body as an experiment of, um, uh, because I, my system was uh, beating it. And they wanted, if we was the same blood type, uh, put it in his body and uh, so that he could possibly live. I did tell them it was okay. They took a lot of blood out of me. I don't know if they put it in him or not, but uh, when they said that, I was thinking, it ain't my blood. It wasn't my blood that did it. It was his blood that brought healing to my body. So uh, I want to tell you this. Even though I got COVID-19, my faith is higher than it's ever been. You you have no idea how high my faith is right now. Because I knew that my life was felt over. But God spared me. So I want to thank everybody. You have no idea to know as the times that I could see and be able to just not respond, but be able to see that the uh, hundreds from around the world, the prayers. I could feel your prayers. I could feel your prayers and it, it, it helped me immensely. And I know everybody's in fear, but I promise you, prayer works. Prayed myself and knowing all of you sent your prayers and it worked. I believe in it and I'm telling you, my faith is just as high as it, it's never been as high as it is right now. And I want you to know that you may get it, but don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith and use wisdom in making sure we don't get it. That's the message that I really, really want to get out there. And don't, don't give it to others. So whatever we have to do to safeguard, uh, you do whatever you feel you need to do. I'm not here to tell people not to gather. Or, I don't care about all that. I just know what I went through, what my body's gone through. I've never had any sickness like this in my whole entire life. Your, your body really literally attacks itself um, in ways. Uh, I will share this, some of the symptoms that you may have. Um, my personal symptoms were I had no taste. And I'm gonna tell you something. If I can't taste something, I thought, Lord, if you're not gonna give my taste back, I, I don't know if I, I, I wanna live, because I love tasting. I was, that was a joke. But I had no taste, I had no smell, um, had no appetite. 
I know you can't tell it, but I have lost quite a bit of weight. Uh, not enough. It's like taking a cup of water out of the ocean. But I had no taste, had no smell. I am getting my taste and smell back. I'm on my 15th day of where my symptoms started. So I've been to battling this for a while, but it just deteriorated towards the end uh, over the last seven days. So about seven, eight days in. Um, so if you, those were a bad cough, a dry cough first. It started first in my throat, went into my, uh, my lungs, uh, but no taste, no smell, absolutely no appetite. I still can, can't hardly eat anything. I have no desire to, I force myself still to eat, which is opposite. I'm, I've always, no matter how sick I get, I always get to eat. So this is definitely by far the worst uh, sickness I've ever had. But I'm done and I went way longer than I wanted to. But I just wanted to share with you and thank you so much for your prayers. And uh, I'm still recovering. I can't talk that for that. I obviously, I could talk longer than I thought. I'll probably pay for it later, but um, uh, I just wanted to thank everybody. And I am a living miracle. I promise you that. And if you thought that uh, that I was uh, passionate about Jesus Christ before. You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm looking forward to the day that I'm able to get back and tell how, how good he is because he's been nothing but good to me. God bless you all. Thank you. And uh, stay safe. Stay safe. And, and get ready for the greatest revival. This is the greatest hour for the church. God spoke that directly to me. Let me know. I said, Jason, it's the greatest hour of evangelism for the church. People are in fear, but we've got something. Even if you're on your deathbed, when you feel like you're, and you literally are all alone, nobody's there for you. Nobody can be there for you. God is always there for you. He kept me through the nights. I feared the nights because I couldn't sleep and my body would attack itself and my body would go into convulsions. I got video showing it. It was, it was terrible. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. But the nights I feared and the days were just tried to endure. But God was always there for me. God was always there for me. So even if you're battling the conditions, keep your faith, keep praying. And people pray for those that are sick because prayer works. God bless y'all. Thank you so much for your prayers. And I want to hug you, but I don't want to touch you right now. So, But I give you a, a thumb hug. Some people think, there, there's my hug right now. So for, for now, we're just thumb hugging. But I love you and I thank God for life. God bless you. Be safe, folks.